Sheed's uh, I was at a function just recently and he's got up and he said, now there's a fellow here whose team I picked up and boy oh boy, were they ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. And now, I thought well, I was really impressed by that. Because what? they were bloody good. Drives the ball towards uh, Stewart, but a magnificent mark taken by Davis. Pulled the ball in virtually one hand. Well, 12 seasons, 218 games with Essendon, three best and fairest, another three seasons with North Melbourne, another two best and fairest, and a premiership, of course, the Kangaroos first in the VFL. 289 games in total. Uh, welcome, Barry Davis. That's quite a legacy. Mm, thank you, Rowan. Yes, I wouldn't have known all of that. <laughs> yeah. Don't say it again because you might, you might drop one or two of those. Best and fairest. Well, all, all yeah. jokes aside, it's, no, I had, it's, I think you, I had you've five. got to be very proud of what you've achieved. Yeah, I was. I was very happy with... Uh, I'd have been an Essendon player forever, um, but because uh, we, as little kids, we used to go to the footy. Mum and Dad were both Essendon people. And uh, my dad played footy and cricket with, this, with um, Port Arlington, and they happened to play football with an Essendon jumper on at that oh. stage. So they were very much... Uh, coming up to Melbourne, they lived. In, we lived in Strathmore. Uh, my brother and I, he's a couple of years younger. We'd we'd go to the <laughs> we'd go to the, the footy, and we'd crawl under <laughs> to get to the fence so we could see all the players. That's what happened. So we we're always Essendon people. So I would never have left there. However, when we got to a stage where the things that I wanted to do in footy, I couldn't do. You have uh, a new coach captain coach who wanted to do all of it by himself yeah. and I didn't think he was up to it to well, do that. We'll, we'll, mm. get, to, uh, mm. we'll get to that mm. bit but there's a fair bit of ground mm. to cover first. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So you arrived at Essen in 1961, played a, a flag in your second year, um, mm. played in two flags within what five seasons mm. and played under the, the legendary John Coleman as yeah. coach. Now yeah. we've heard so much about Coleman the player I don't mm. reckon you hear so much about Coleman, the coach. What was he like as a coach? Yeah, well, um, as a player, he was outstanding. Yeah. You know, people, and you probably be one of them, who moved from one end of the ground to the other. When, when it was uh, first quarter over, all the people would migrate to the school then. And uh, he was just outstanding. But also he had really good players that were feeding him too. Mm. You know, Billy Hutchison, my goodness. He, he, he was good for many years later, mm. and uh, he, he'd come to all of our training, you know, circle work, boy, if he hit it at you, you knew, boom, yeah, yeah. it was at you before you could say, bang. He, he was good, and they had lots of good players, but, but he was a, a flyer to John. Yeah. He, he could do that. He, he would always have a little end-to-end -end, uh, training. Yeah. Would you believe that? Yeah. He'd stand there, and he'd have his hands behind his back, like that just watching and then all of a sudden out of the blue three players are going for one kick and he comes over the top he's supposed to be not able to yeah, play yeah, after his name and yeah. he's still jumping up and taking marks yeah and he, he had a funny uh thumb but it was tough yeah and he he never dropped it yeah yeah was, <laughs> was he a, a hard taskmaster as a coach because oh, yeah. he'd been yep. such a brilliant player he was I, I don't I don't know why he did this, but uh, I I came and played a, a half a half forward, and I don't know why, but I was taking a few too many ha marks. So we said, <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? He said, no, you got. You, I think well, well, we'll get you to play on the half back line. I said, oh, okay, okay. I'd never played half back. I played centre half forward when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and when I was a, a kid, uh, primary school, I was a ruckman. Yeah, right. <laughs> How silly is that? Anyway, um, he, he played me in as many play, uh, positions as he could think of. I played in the, the centre and I played full back. I played half, played on the wing one day. I don't know why, maybe he had someone organised. He was very good at uh, putting the opposition team together. Mm. He knew who they were, yep. what their strengths were, where they could hurt us, and we played it. We were told yeah. how to play after that. 
it, it, it was an incredible era. I mean, between f what forty six and sixty five, Essendon played in ten grand finals yeah. for five oh, yeah. flags. Oh, yeah. So when you arrived, mm. you must have had an incredible array of uh, role models. Oh, I did. I did. Do you want to get a name? You want me a to tell you us? a couple? Well, around the corner from where we live, we lived in Windsor Avenue and Carnarvon Road. Two houses down was Ken Fraser. Yeah. And his family. Well, he was a little bit ahead of me. We both went to Essendon North Primary School and we both went to Essendon High School. Yeah. And uh, all the things that he did, I did, followed him. You know, and I was playing in the, in the team, year nine, I think. I was, I was playing in the senior team. So I was playing with him then. That was yeah. good. He was terrific. He was just a great player. Great fella too. He still is. And um, that was number one. Barry Capuano lived one street up. Yeah. Um, Paul Doran lived one down. Yeah. Uh, you want to keep going here? Well, well, I have the whole team up. Well, they were great yeah. days, Barry. Well, but we had a lot of uh, local people playing. Properly. So, mm. 68 was a bit of a, a last hurrah, I suppose, in terms of mm. on field, because mm. they, they really sort of declined for a few years after that. Yeah. Of course, Des Tardenham arrives 1972 and they make the finals mm. again. Yeah. Your I vice played, captain, yeah. Tutty. Mm. Yeah. But then you went to North under a 10 year rule. Yeah. Now, can you tell us about how that unfolded and why you left? Well, I had just about every club had come to our place, which is a tiny place in Oak Park. Because of we the 10 down. year rule? Yes. Yep. And all of them wanted me to come to their particular club. And they had different reasons for wanting me there. Richmond was one, yep. Collingwood, South Melbourne. They, they all came to our place. But when Alan and, um, and the Secretary of North, who you know. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, who was it? Yeah, Ron Joseph, it was. I'll help you oh, out Ronnie, there, mate. Yeah. I'll help you out there, mate. Well, Ronnie did yeah. wore you so many him. hats there. Yeah, yeah he know? did. Like, he was terrific. Yeah, they, anyway, they sat there and um, I went and got him a cup of coffee or tea or something and came back and Albert, who's carrying a case, and I said, what are you carrying a case for? He said, oh, you'll see. And he stood up, opened the case, and money went everywhere. They were still doing that sort of stuff yeah. in 1972, were they? They were still <laughs> yeah, well, doing those it. sort of tricks. Yeah, he did this. I said, what is that? He, I said, I don't, I'm not going to have that. No, oh, yes, you do. If you're going to come to us, you're going to have this. I said, no. We, he and I are down on our hands and knees putting it back in the case. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> oh, gee, it was funny. Anyway, uh, Alan just, he was sitting over there and he said, uh, Barry, would you be interested in being captain? And I said, yes, I would like to. And I said, ooh, that's a good start, you know. <laughs> that's a good start. And uh, he said, uh, what about this? What about you? Would you like to run the fitness program? I said, yep, that's what I do. That's what I was yeah. doing, teaching at a university. And I took lessons and I took, yeah. So I was dying to do that. Tuddy wouldn't have me do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so um, they, they were two things. The third thing was that he said, now, I think you probably would be best suited if you want to play on the ball. Do you want to play on the ball? I said, yes, I do. And I did. Yeah, right. I played there. Uh, what was the last thing he said? Oh, do you want to be on match committee? I said, absolutely. And he said, good, you're on it. You know, and it was, <laughs> it was just terrific. Well, you know, everything I wanted to do in footy, yeah. there it was in front of me. Incredible, mm. you know, for younger people watching this mm. and are unaware, the 10 year rule, a very short lived thing, but North. Yeah. Probably the only club that really benefited from it, and mm. yourself, Doug Wade, mm. John Rantel. Yeah, they, have we I were, missed anyone? They were no, the main they, ones, weren't they? Were the and then well, Barry Cable Cape's coming in. Was always coming. Yeah. Come, all coming back to North Melbourne. Yeah, he'd have lived here. <laughs> but like you were only there for three years, but you won mm. two best and fairest, mm. played two grand finals, and of yeah. course you're captain of North's first mm. premiership team at the mm. time. We had a good team. Mm. At the time, w were you aware of sort of how? rarefied a place in football history that gives you, being mm. the first well, captain of a, mm. well, a premiership good. site. Well, and a, and a lot of it was due to Alan and, and Ron. Mm. Ron. Ron, I never had a problem with Ron. Yeah. And he never had a problem with me, really. Yeah. There were a couple of times he told me off, but uh, I tell him to go away and have a little talk and think about it and then come back. He said, all right, yeah, all right, you're right. Now, Barras <laughs> had his problems with Keith. Greg didn't he? Oh, yes. Among oh, others. yes. Oh. <laughs> right. um, I want to ask you, so you win the best and fairest in a premiership year. You're mm. 32. It's mm. it's getting on, but it's not ancient. 
Mm. Why did you retire at that moment? Was it just like, did it uh, feel like the perfect time or did you feel like you were finished? Oh no, I wasn't finished. I could, uh, I could have played on. Okay. Uh, well, why didn't you? Well, um, we had two kids. I live on a big property. I was at a university mm. and I was on match committee uh, and they were finishing at 11 o'clock at night and I had to teach at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, right. And, you know, it was just too much and uh, I, had, I thought, well, that'll do. Yeah, okay. Mm. So uh, a mm. couple of years off mm. and then lo and behold, you, mm. well, you're saying you, it's full on, but then yeah. you come back to Western as I did. coach. I did. So um, That was fantastic. I loved it. Did that. you need sort mm. of a couple of years to freshen up and re yeah, it re-spark was good. the batteries? Yeah, it was it? good. Yeah, it was good. I, I did a bit of, I went back to Essendon and did, did uh, some work with Billy. Yep. Yeah, Bill Stephen. Bill Stephen. Yeah. And he was a good fella. Yeah. I liked him. Um, in fact, I liked m m nearly all of the blokes at Essendon. We had, we had terrific people, really. And I, I, I took on coaching because that's something I, always, I wanted to do anyway. Yeah. I would have gone somewhere else, maybe, but, but they wanted me to do it. Yeah. And I liked it. Well, was and it, I think I got a good result out of that too. And strangely enough, Sheed's, uh, I was at a function just recently and he's got up and he said, now there's a fellow here whose team I picked up and boy, oh boy, were they ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I, well, I was really impressed by that because I've, they were bloody good. They, I've heard, I've heard good. Sheed mm. say that so mm. many times. And Has he? Yeah. Oh, and and I grew up with those baby mm. bombers, I, I guess. Mm. So I was quite... Close yeah. to him, and mm. I mean, you made finals in '79, mm. had some really good wins in '78, even yeah. 1980. Mm. I guess a lot of um, mm. people younger than me that w would like to know what it was like coaching mm. the very young Tim Watson, Paul Van yeah. der Haar, Simon yeah. Madden, Terry Danaher. Mm. Did, did you feel like this was a, a player group that was on oh, the yeah. way to something oh, yeah. special? Yeah, I thought they were. I thought they were as good as they. Yeah. We, we, we probably didn't have enough of Roger. I think, oh, there's a bit of a sad thing, Merritt. He, he was, yeah. he, I just spoke to him uh, a couple of weeks ago when he came down a Hall of Fame or something like that. I think he, I think yeah. he was in the Hall of Fame. And I said to him, you know, his best footy was up when he went to Brisbane. Yeah. He played fantastic up there. It's an half forward most of the time. Yeah. And, and he played really well. He felt there was something about him that was necessary. You know, he was a captain. The toughness. Yeah, he was hard, marked well, kicked well. He could. He's slow developer, mm. wasn't he? Look, yeah, I, very I, rem slow. I remember seeing mm. his first game yeah. under you. Yeah. And that was what, 78. But he, yeah. he really didn't cement his no, senior birth until about 83. Mm. But he was so good when he went up there. Yeah. Wasn't he? Oh, he came good very quickly. Yeah, I thought he was good. Uh, but, but this we group, did have some good players. We did, and you know, Glenn Hawker, Merv Nagel. Oh yeah. Um, oh help, M Merv Nagel. Oh. You know, a couple Hawker that didn't. was great. Even yeah. a guy like uh, Terry Kale. Like I, yeah, I, I he loved was great. Terry Kale. He wasn't know. he good? Um, yeah, yeah, I got on well with him. Yeah, well the Saints, good. the Saints sorted him out that yeah. day down. Yeah, they did. Oh, but but you, you've mm, got you've yeah. got out of mm. coaching and VFL footy yeah. at the age of thirty-seven. Mm. Yeah. It's you. Mm think about it now and you think, mm. gee, that's really early. Yeah. Um, did, mm. did you ever sort of think yes, about I did. coming back? Yes, I did. I did. I told Kevin in one of the games, I th we wanted to, I wanted us to win it and I was going to play. Oh, wow. And I, I could play, I could kick the ball better and yeah. I could mark it and I could run. I would do all those things as good as any of the players. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> it wasn't probably as good as everyone, but, but um, on the on the training night, I put my foot in um, a rubber thing that we had on the uh, sprinklers. Yeah. And I went down, and the the ankle came up like a balloon. Oh wow! And it told me that I shouldn't be playing, <laughs> and that was it. I pulled out then. Well, and, what about uh, in terms of coaching? Mm. Did you think about coming back to coaching, or once you resigned um, at the end of nineteen eighty, were yeah. you satisfied that was it? Mm. I would have liked to have come back. I think. I know, but I'd made that decision, and and Sheeds, I picked Sheeds. You know, that they rang me and said who the people are. That well, it was him or Alan James, head. wasn't it? Basically, yeah, in and the I, end. yeah, and I picked him, and that was it. Inspired selection, mm. Barry. No, <laughs> inspired. Yeah, selection. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. <laughs> I gave him lots of the drills and things that I had. I had a heap of them. You know, that 
I thought he might be interested, and he was interested. Yeah. He, he didn't usually take too, too many of them on. <laughs> he wanted to do it his own way. Well, he, he, mm. pick, he picks mm. up a lot of ideas from a lot of different he does. sources. He shows, does. You, know. yeah. Yeah. you still have an obvious love for this club. Oh, yeah. And, and I know, do. know a lot of people here. I do. What, what is it that makes Essendon special for you? Um, I think I think this <laughs> this place is pretty good. Mm. You wouldn't get much better than this, would you? No, there isn't. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to spend more time um, with some of the players. You know, yeah. I've spent a fair bit of time with uh, Kyle Hooker. Uh, this is when they were at St Bernard's, and I came the next Friday, and uh, I'd, I'd spent time with him and showing him how I thought. This is how he held it between his legs. I said, "No, what on? No." You've got to be over here. You're a right footer and the ball's got to be there. Ah, oh. he said, this arm doesn't feel right. I said, no, you can have it bent a little bit. So this arm's straight and this arm bends a little bit. So you move it up the ball, only about that far. He had long, he's got very long fingers and he's a, such a good mark. Yeah. Oh, gosh, he's good. Anyway, there. Oh, all right. Do you reckon that would be right? And I said, yep, I'm going to stand just where the boy is here. And... Uh, I'll stand on the mark and you're going to have 10 shots. You're 35 metres out, 40 metres out. He kicked everyone straight through the middle. Is that right? I thought, yes, God, <laughs> he's listened to me. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> so the next Friday I came, I parked my car and I thought, oh, I'll park it away from there because it'll go through the windscreen. <laughs> anyway, I park and I'm standing there and he sees me. He goes, <laughs> yeah, like this, you see. I thought, oh, beauty. Anyway, he's had 10 kicks and he kicked every one of them straight over my head. Uh, I was so pleased well, about isn't that. that. Isn't that it great good. that young, young professional mm. footballers are still yeah. willing to listen to the advice of yeah. former champions? Yeah. And all you kids at home, you heard that little mm. lesson there. Fantastic advice from a great of the mm. game. Well, some great stories, Barry. You're a legend, not just of one, but two clubs. Um, a real favourite of the older Bomber fans. and. I'm sure younger Bomber fans, after hearing your story, uh, they'll be big fans of yours too. Uh, great to catch up. Thanks for joining mm. us. Thank you, Ron. Mm. Well, hope you enjoyed that interview. Uh, a heap more that we didn't have room to put on here. If you want to hear the full version, you can hear the audio at essendonfc.com.au.